Uh, another word I like to use too is instigate. I think it's such a great word because a lot of you know people are waiting for things to happen, right? And you know, I like to say, you know what? I'm I'm not going to wait. I'm going to I'm going to instigate this. You know, I'm going to like make this happen today. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you know, sometimes I move too fast, but I, I think it's better to move to, too fast to make some mistakes than just uh, oh, yeah. you know wait too long before you miss the opportunity. What is I think it was Reed Hoffman, right? And he said, uh, if you if you've uh, if you launch your product and there's no mistakes, then you've waited too long. Something of that nature, right? You know, <laughs> yeah, like, right, you right. know, I mean, we used to joke, yep. right, that, you know, uh, Microsoft, you know, success, you know, version 3.0, right? Whatever. <laughs> you know, yep. I mean, there's going to be mistakes. and But you, you know, I mean, you don't want to launch a, a lemon. But at the same time, like, just get it out. Get, get a yeah. minimum file product out and uh, and then rely on customer feedback to make it better and better. Welcome back to another episode of Over a Pint, the podcast that deals with the fast-paced world of marketing as told through the eyes of industry veterans. Not a lot of theory here, guys. Real-world practical experience. Joining me today, my partners in crime, president of Celtic Advertising, Mr. Brian Meehan, partner and vice president of Celtic Advertising, Kurt Lingle. Celtic is a full-service advertising agency located in Milwaukee's Third Ward. And I'm Pat McGovern, director of new business development at Emicidia. We are an award-winning digital agency also located here in Milwaukee. Psyched about the show today, guys. We have on <laughs> David Romano. David is the force behind the highly rated and super engaging podcast, The Gonzo Experience. But that only tells a small part of David's story. This brother has a resume a mile long. I'm going to share a couple things here. One, he started, ran, and operated seven businesses. He's author of several books, including Crash and Learn, Lessons in Business. He is a two-time TEDx speaker, an adjunct professor, an avid runner, a board member for the Western New York Make-A-Wish Foundation, and a local board member for Junior Achievement. He does stand-up comedy, and he runs a super successful podcast, the gonzo experience david it's a shame you haven't done more with your life david come on you know really welcome to the podcast well (laughs) thank you for that thank you for that and you guys i i'm sure you guys are are ahead of me and i'm a slack with you but i i I do i'm honored honored to be in your company david thanks so much for being on and 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 guys just so you know when i talk about like a successful podcast Mm -hmm. i mean this guy's had on grant cardone kendra scott ed mylett i mean these are freaking huge huge names and now he's being gracious enough to spend a little time with with us us. (laughs) david thanks again um hey listen we've got a little addition here before we start the show it's called over a pint for a reason david what do you got in front of you (laughs) uh i i have a glass of water i'm so sorry (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I have a coffee mug full of water. So it's a pint of water. <laughs> Hydration is key. Yeah, exactly. It comes in yeah. many forms. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I should. Well, actually, I'm in Rochester, New York, home of Genesee Beer. You guys know about Genesee Beer? Oh, yeah. Uh, one of the oldest yeah. breweries in the country. We're actually the sixth uh-huh. largest brewery in the U.S. Um, so oh. if I was really on my game, I would have had a nice pint of, of Jenny Beer, Jenny Light, maybe Jenny Cream Ale. Um, and really been able to hang with you guys. So, uh, but I will have one when I get home tonight. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah. Brian, what do you got? I got Miller Lite, keeping it light, crispy, and refreshing, and keeping oh, it Milwaukee. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Our Milwaukee. friends at uh, our friends at Miller Lite, and I'm drinking it out of a Celtic pint glass. So, anybody wants one of these, just hit us up in the notes. I'll be happy to send out a Celtic pint glass. Mr. Lingle. Well, you know, I uh, unlike David, I know hi- hydrating through water is one way to do it, um, but I'm not doing that today. So I am actually, <laughs> I am hydrating my body. We had these folks on a couple weeks ago. It's yet mm-hmm. to air. I've got a Beauforting here. It's out of Luxembourg. And I got to tell you, no, I did not sign an agreement with these folks, but the beer is really light and crisp. And for a uh, podcast mid-afternoon, this is perfect. Perfect. David? Choice. It's great to have you on the show. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, guys, I've got a Surly Brewing. I've got a, a, a case, uh, uh, excuse me, a 12-pack of uh, a, a line of 
assorted sours, which I'm really into. This mm. one's called the Key Lime Supreme. Nice. David, welcome to the podcast. Let's get this thing going. David, you've got so much experience. I, I read through some of your background and some of the things that you've done. But for the listeners, give us the elevator speech. Let us know more about David Mamano through your own words. Yeah, I think that if I were really to kind of hone it down, um, I do two things fairly well. <laughs> and, and, and I only say that because um, I, I, I feel like I'm in my zone when I'm doing them. Um, I feel energy and joy. Uh, and, and usually those are the things that you're good at and that you should just be doing more of. Mm-hmm. So when so there's two things. When I am hosting, right? So hosting a podcast, hosting an event, hosting a comedy show, um, you know, hosting uh, or emceeing an event, hosting a panel, things like that. When I'm hosting, when I'm speaking, uh, I'm in my zone. Mm-hmm. Love it. You know, my heart lights up, my soul lights up, and I don't want to stop. Um, that's one thing. The other thing that I love, it, that it's just my, it, and it's actually, you know, uh, I've known Patrick now for about three or four months, and I would say I'd probably share this uh, with him, but connect. I love, I'm a connector. People just, mm-hmm. oh my God, Davey, you know, I probably get, I, I probably should open up like a recruiting agency because I probably get, you know, <laughs> three to five emails a day. Wow. Of people saying, oh, David, I'm trying to, you know, meet this person or I'm looking for a job in this area. And, um, you know, I've got 26,000 very close friends on LinkedIn and, you know, almost 5,000 on Facebook and, uh, you know, quote unquote, very close. But I do, <laughs> you know, I, I uh, like Patrick and, and probably you guys, too. Uh, I, 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 I really I love people authentically love people. I love connecting, learning their stories mm. um, and they're, you know, and, and, and uh, if I go to an event, I'm not one of those people that would just, you know, shallow, you know, what do you do? Who can I have a business card? Like, I want to know. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions, um, you know, really like meaningful connections. And hmm. uh, so I would say hosting and connecting. Love doing those things. And that's why I do my podcasts and events and speaking. Um, before the pandemic, I had an event that was kind of um, really described as hosting people. I, I created a network called Avanti and it was uh it was really it was it was a networking and learning group for entrepreneurs and uh you know grew started it here in Rochester uh grew it to about 100 people they would pay an, an annual membership fee and we get together once a month after work different locations and uh the first hour and a half was beer wine or d'oeuvres networking uh and then the second you know half I bring in a speaker to teach us you know like an expert uh to teach us something about it could be entrepreneurship, leadership, sales, marketing, all that stuff. So, uh, and then we started expanding that into different cities, like a chapter model. Uh, but then the pandemic hit, so yeah. you know it went, went on hold. But uh, yeah. as we come out of that, uh, this this pandemic, uh, which I hope we are, uh, as we as we record this today, the uh, you know the Omicron variant is the new star of the show, and uh, we'll see what that happens. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, I'm hoping we're going to be out of it soon. And uh, in, in that case, I do want to reinvent, you know, maybe I'll call it Avanti again uh, or, or something else, but some, some type of high level um, networking group that, that probably is going to be online and probably uh, have vetted members that truly want to um, establish meaningful connections and, and uh, with, with other uh, like-minded people uh, and, and help those people and also be helped. Right. And that's, and that's, that's where I'm going with, 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 with and, and then market that with my podcast, with my speaking, with my books, all that stuff, you know? So, so that's kind of where I'm, I'm kind of honing everything into, into a, uh, a purposeful direction, I would say. Huh. You know, quick, if I could, because I'll forget to ask this question. So I'm going to ask it now, but you know, from a David, from a networking and a, like you said, just a connector, I mean, in your experience, I mean, some people are just really good at it. Some people are really comfortable at it. I see it in my own, you know, my own professional career. There's folks that are just, they, they're dialed in, they get it. It's just what they do on a day-to-day basis inherently and organically. Others, it's, they don't know what to do. If you ask someone like, hey, reach out to someone or connect, they get, they shrivel up. What, in your experience, I mean, for you, was this something you learned? Was this something you got good at? Was this something you've always been good at it? How did you get to be Mm. as great of a connector as you are today based on, you know, your history or your your previous runway? 
Yeah, I, I think it was it definitely some of it is God given, some, you know, innate. I mean, I was the guy that was the, you know, the class president and, you know, the fraternity social chairman. And I mean, I, you know, that was all, you know, the, those, so those were like kind of natural things for me. Mm. Um, but I did go through, you know, like training, you know, Dale Carnegie, you know, other corporate training, you know, to bring it and hone it to the next level. Um, I actually, you know, kind of near neck of the woods. I, when I was in my early twenties, I moved to Chicago for a year to, to explore becoming a stand-up comedian. And I took improv classes and comedy classes and acting classes. And I, you know, I did all that stuff too. And I think that helps as well. Like if you, you know, if you could, if you could do comedy, um, you know, you could do pretty much everything, anything, right? I mean, there's public speaking, you know, and then there's comedy, right? If you're, if you're for the make people laugh, uh, uh, for success, you know, that, that definitely gives you a titanium, uh, backbone, but I was always that guy where, um, you know, I remember being class president and like not feeling that talented, but being able to organize a lot of people that we like, so we would have the best float, you know, we would win homecoming, mm. you know, the homecoming, like, be, you know, we would have an incredible, one of the best ever, you know, senior balls. Right. And, um, and, you know, did I know how to decorate a float. No, not at all. But I knew how to surround myself with people that were like great organizers and artists and all that stuff. And I remember thinking back then, like, you know, I'm not really like I don't feel super talented with a lot of skills, but I I, I I'm grateful that I can organize people yeah. to, to do great things. And and somehow they want to follow me. And I'm like, you know, and then you have that imposter syndrome. Like, am I good enough for for them to follow me? And I'm like, well, following me so let me just ignore that stupid feeling you know? so, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but uh but you know for me and i also think it comes from like not being fake like i really do love people like i yeah. really enjoy learning about people that's why i love podcasting because i get mm -hmm. to ask some some questions some questions and be authentic um, and you know i think we've all been to those networking events that are cheesy and people like blatantly want business and mm -hmm. it's like a business card exchange and it's you know they it's like you know cheesy mccheesy and uh, you want to take a shower afterwards. You're like, oh, God, that was gross. And then you've been to some events where people are like, you know, you go a little bit deeper and they're, they're the, the little, little more high, higher level connections. Mm. Um, you know, I like to say meaningful, meaningful connections, you know. Uh, that's, that's what I enjoy. I don't have yeah, – I could talk forever, but I, I really don't have a lot of tolerance for small talk, believe it. Mm -hmm. you know, like, let's go a little bit deep. You know, like, I want to talk to you for sure, but I don't want to, you know, just talk about, like, some – quick yeah, stuff and then you know have you asked for my business card like yeah let's, let's go deep and get to know each other and see if we can help each other love it yeah yeah hey david i've got uh, two questions i'll see if i can get them both in today but one of them goes back to your ted talk where you talked about culture and your passion for culture and the reason it struck me is culture's hard um sometimes um to get everybody on board to get everyone engaged to get everybody excited especially in this covid world where most people aren't even working in an office so what I liked about some of your tips were, it's not like fly the troops to Paris and uh, jet set over here. There, I mean, they were simple things. Could you maybe, for an entrepreneur, maybe someone who has a small business, they're struggling with culture, can you just give a few tips? Sure, well, you know, so uh, I do have that TEDx talk called Make Love in the Workplace, <laughs> and then it became a, a, a book, so that's my second book, uh, and it is rated G. It is all about workplace culture. <laughs> you know? uh, I wrote that book, and then the whole uh, Me Too movement came out. You know, Matt Lauer doing his thing, and you know, uh -huh. you know, all these, you know, even Charlie Rose is, you know, getting caught up. And I'm like, oh my god, I I couldn't have used that title like a year <laughs> or later, you know. So, yeah. uh, but uh, uh, but yeah, it was really designed to get people to turn their head and be like, what's this yeah. book about, you know? Right. Uh, but you know, I, I guess first and foremost be an authentic leader you know let like let people know that you truly do care about them like when you ask them a question like how was your weekend um you know just you know like don't, just don't make it like these questions like you know you're just going through the motion like oh you know like ask like what did you do oh my god was that fun did you bring your husband you know oh did your mm -hmm. kids like it you know oh, i want to go there someday like really engage with your with your team uh you know if you if you all get if you like your family you could call a family otherwise call it a team you know some people like they don't like their family i'm like i don't want you know but it's a, so if it's your team um let them know that you're you know uh a lot of leaders a lot of manic entrepreneurial leaders they don't they don't really listen right they 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 ask the question and then five seconds later their mind is drifting and the the you know the, the people can tell people yeah. can tell you know i did a 360 you know 
was to see feedbacks. And um, I wanted one done on me to see, you know, what type of CEO I was and what I could do better. And the overwhelming thing was like, Dave means well, but he just really doesn't listen. We could tell he's not <laughs> listening, you know, and that, that hit me hard. And I really, then I would say, okay, how was your weekend? And I would dig deep with more questions. So that's when I like, I do, I, I do care and I do want to know. Mm-hmm. So, um, or if it's an issue, if, you know, it, it could be something work related, person related, like be there as, you know, there as, as, you know, the, the matriarch or the patriarch of that company, you know, like people, people want to feel like I'm, I am part of a tribe and our leader is fantastic, right? Like that, that right there engages people. And then they want to, they, they don't want to leave. They want to do a great job. They want to be recognized for the great job. And that's not always with pay, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. those are some basics. But um, I would say other things too are, you know, think out of the box. Like people don't want to just go to their office or go to the cube every day and pump out work. They, they want to have some fun too. So, you know, like let's pretend there's not COVID. <laughs> you <laughs> could, are there things you could do out of the office? Like we did, you know, remember when we were in school, we, we like uh, grade school, elementary school, we would do field trips, right? We'd go to a museum, we'd go to the planetarium, whatever. Like, Take field trips, you know, like, and, and find out and don't don't decide as the boss, like, where you're going to go. Ask them where they want to go. Take a poll. Uh, but take a, take a half day, take a whole day, and go do something fun as a group. Mm-hmm. And if you're a big, big company and you can't do everybody, go as departments, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, but what happens on those is I find that um, uh, people that normally don't comm- commiserate at work, maybe they don't, they're not sitting near each other, uh, they get to know each other a little bit more, mm-hmm. which is nice. And then the other thing is a lot of times the CEO will say, oh, my God, we're going to give up a whole day. Like, how are we, how are we going to make up the time? I'm, you yeah. know, and if they add up, like, I pay these people like $5,000 a day with everybody, like, that's lost money. But it's not. If you are hiring a player, they'll still get the work done. And you've just done something to engage them yeah. more into the company. And we all know how, how painful it is to um, bring out a new person, find a new yep. person, especially mm-hmm. in today's world, and yeah. then train them. And so, so retention is, retention, is so yeah. much easier, you know, retention is so much easier than having to, to you know, pay, find, find and pay and train somebody new. So those little things. Um, and then fun stuff you can do in the office. Like we would dress up for Halloween and we would really get into it because they had a great prize. You know, we hundred dollar gift certificate to the, uh, you know, to the, who had the best costume. So we saw some great costumes, you know, um, <laughs> What I would do as well is so, especially if you hire young younger people these days, you know, um, they do like to volunteer. They like they do like to be yeah. involved in the community. So I offer a paid week uh, to volunteer in the community, and it doesn't have to be all at once. It could be a day here, a day there, it could be a half day there, but it's in addition to their love PTO. It. It's great. Right. Yeah, yeah it's and they great. love it. And you know, honestly, uh, between us um, and your listeners. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I would say it was very rare that somebody took the full week. It was a day yep. or two or three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But just the fact that you offer it oh, is a great rec- recruiting and retention tool. So I, I talk about a lot of this in my TED talk in the book. But those are, those are some. Oh, I'll give you one more. This is my favorite one. You guys got one more? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, my, favorite one, <laughs> my favorite one is when they fill out the application at work and uh, you ask about uh, their, their kid and their kid's birthdays. And, you know, people, a lot of like, why do you want to know this? And I'm like, you'll see. Because <laughs> um, what we do, any kid that's 18 or younger, um, we would uh, we would send them a gift in the mail. Right. And it usually was like um, uh, maybe it could be a fifty dollar gift card to the movies. Um, and then what we would do to make it even better is, you know, we could do this because I hate about 20 people um, is I would you know buy a nice card and everybody would sign it. You know, and, um, you know, hey, Johnny, I can't believe you're nine. I remember seeing you at the company picnic and, uh, you know, you've grown so, so much little little notes for little little Johnny, you know. So so Johnny, who never gets any like snail mail. So little Johnny now he, he gets he gets a letter in the mail <laughs> from all mommy's employees with cute little notes. He gets a fifty dollar gift certificate to the movies. And uh, so 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 that makes him feel great. Right. And then guess what he goes to tell mommy? Mommy, I love where you work. Yeah, they're so you know? great. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. David is like the best boss ever, <laughs> you know? And so selfishly, again, I am mm. it, I am like cementing a team member to the family. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. And uh because yeah. uh, they're gonna be like, Well, where am I going? Who, who else is gonna, you know, do this for do my, this. my you know, I mean, for especially I mean 
I'm saying a mother, a father too. Like it's more important than their kids. Right. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're hitting them right in the heart with something that you're not doing it for the selfish reason, but it's, it's, it's kind of like a nice icing on the cake. Uh, yeah. uh, but that, that's one of the favorite things that we would, that we, you would know what I love with. about it is the simplicity because yeah. I've talked to people that are like, well, we're going to try and hit grand slams and have these major events and big to do's and tons of planning. Mm -hmm. And then I'm listening to your Ted talk and it's just like, you know, go say hi to somebody and listen. Yes, yes, yeah. about the day, you know, maybe go on a field trip. Those are low cost, high return uh, types of investments yeah. you're making in your team. Oh, yeah. You guys remember, I mean, we're, we're probably roughly around the same age. Remember um, in the, I think it was the late 80s, Life's Little Instruction Booklet, maybe yes. late 80s, early 90s, a little coffee table book. It was like a hundred things that um, would, would like little tips that would help you to have a great life. And number one was um, a person's greatest need is to feel appreciated. That was number yeah. one. And that costs a thing. Like Brian, like you just said, like what does it cost to go up to somebody and say, you know what, um, the, uh, the project you did yesterday that you presented in the meeting, um, I don't want to tell you for everybody to embarrass you, but I, I just want to let you know personally, like that was damn good work. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, I can tell you really put your heart and soul in that. It didn't cost a penny, it took about 10 minutes of your time, but yeah. guess what, you just made that person's day, right? But beyond like you can ever believe, you know, like you guys have gotten these comments where maybe somebody just said it to be nice quickly, but you're like, wow, that meant the world to me, you know? Wow, yeah. So little, like you just said, little, little things that don't cost yeah. anything. Right. So, yeah. And you know what? The other thing too is, uh, I always try to find parallels with people. Like, you know, we're talking with you about your business, your, your cult, we're talking culture, we're talking your podcast. And, you know, I know a word that I've heard you use quite often is immerse. You know where it's you know you'd like to immerse and it gets back david earlier on you're, you were saying i really genuinely like or love or care about people um and that ties into that word immerse whether it's you know you having a conversation with you know a guest in your podcast and you really really there's there's a lot going on here than just mm -hmm. telling or talking about a story you're immersing yourself or it's with an employee but you know, I see that in you and I'm hearing that from you in different examples, that word immerse. And like I said, I've heard you use that and that really, you know, immerse, care, authenticity. It all kind of lives in that same world. And to me, that's something I'm really picking up on. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's a lot of a lot of purposeful immersion. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, another word I like to use, too, is instigate. I think it's such a great word because a lot of you know people are waiting for things to happen. Right. And, you know, I like to say, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to I'm going to instigate this. You know, I'm going to like make this happen today. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, sometimes I move too fast, but I, I think it's better to move too, too fast to make some mistakes than just, uh, oh, yeah. you know, wait too long before you miss the opportunity. What is that? I think it was Reed Hoffman. Right. And he said, uh, if you if you've uh, if you launch your product and there's no mistakes, then you've waited too long. Something of that <laughs> nature, right? You know, yeah, like, right, you right. know, I mean, we used to joke, yep. right? That, you know, uh, Microsoft, you know, success is, you know, version 3.0, right? Whatever. <laughs> you yep. know, I mean, there's going to be mistakes. and But you, you know, I mean, you don't want to launch a, a lemon. But at the same time, like, just get it out. Get, get a yeah. man file product out and, uh, and then rely on customer feedback to make it better and better. So, David, let's hang on that for a little bit because one of the things I want to I want to get your take on is you you started, operated, ran seven businesses. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, what give us like? What are some of the learnings that you you took away from that? Like, you know, are there some kind com commonalities that ran across each one of those businesses and some do's and don'ts and just like I'd love to just hear your take on that. Uh, yeah, well, one thing one thing I learned is that I am manic, so uh, <laughs> there's actually a term that uh, is um, there's a book that came out a few years ago called um, uh, hypomania, and a lot of uh, uh, like Christopher Columbus was hypomanic, uh, Alexander Hamilton was hypomanic, um, you know, Andrew Carnegie was hypomanic, right? So they're they're uh, they're not manic to the point like they're out of control, um, and they're not they're not depressed. And if normal is in the middle, they're somewhere between normal and manic, right? They're always mm -hmm. kind of like in this in this controlled, semi-controlled state of mania, right? The, you know, ideas and energy, and um, so what I what I learned is that you know early on is that I need to control that. Like I have it, I don't want to be medicated, but I need to 
control it. And the way I do that is, well, like you said, Pat, I exercise, I run, um, you know, I eat, I eat well, I sleep well, all that good stuff. So health wise, but also too, people like you need to surround yourself with the people that, uh, uh, the, the yings to your yang, as they, as they say, right. You know, behind every great Walt Disney, there's a Roy. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and so you know, a lot of great leaders, uh, have a, you know, a no man or a no woman behind them to question. And, uh, because a lot of people like me, we don't, we just want to keep on going forward and see what happens. Um, but it's nice to surround yourself with people to say, all right, like the idea, let's take a step just half a step back day for a day and talk it through a little bit more, mm-hmm. you know? And, uh, and once I learned the art of doing that, um, uh, uh, it helped a lot. And the way I learned that is kind of a funny story actually. So my first big business was called next step magazine. It was back in 95. That was my first business. And it was a printed magazine for high school students. We would help them with college career and life planning, gave it free to the high schools nationwide. And we would sell advertising in it to make sure. money. Right. And, and so, um, I love this idea. Once we, yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. And it was, that's when print was like a thing. Right. And, yeah. uh, so we started in Rochester, where I'm from, and then we went to Buffalo and Syracuse, to two neighboring cities, and we expanded to New York State. And then franchising, you know, we ended up expanding to every state. So we were in every state, wow. 20,000 high schools. So I was like, Jeez. you know, I would joke that I'm like this little Napoleon of publishing, like global domination. You know? <laughs> so, and uh, but once we reached the whole country, um, then I was like, all right, where do we go next? And we did franchise in some other countries as well. But then what what happened was um, I started inventing like other products and companies like you know, within next step. Um, and I was really given whiplash to the team. Right. And, uh, because we, we could have grown so much more vertically and then I was growing horizontally. And, uh, one of my team members, her name is Diana Fisher. She came to me one day. Um, and she goes, Dave, I feel like we're growing like a bush instead of a tree, hmm. uh, you know, growing vertically instead of a horizontally, I'm sorry, growing her horizontally instead of vertically. And I was so powerful to me. And uh, I was like, wow, that's I'm like, first of all, thank you for having the courage to tell me that. And then I was like, wow, I didn't know that. But now that I think about it, you're right. So I hired a consultant to add some process and structure and procedure to the company. One of the things he did is, you know, he said, I know people like you, David. And uh, so what he did is he created a, uh, an R&D committee. And uh, my, I, my any new idea I had had to be vetted and approved through the R, this R&D committee, right? And, uh, but I was not allowed to be on it, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Cause I'm very, very persuasive, you know? So, um, so I was not allowed to be on it. So, so I was like, I agreed to that. Like I had to agree and buy in. And so I had a yep. form I had to fill out and here's the idea and blah, blah, blah. And I have to give it to them. They, they meet once, once a month to go over my ideas and like none of them are getting approved. I'm like, guys, you're not approving any of these mm-hmm. things. You know, they're like, well, Dave, it's because <laughs> these are all can- gold guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, come on, it's gold. And, uh, but they, uh, they were like, David, we can go so much further with what we have, you know, why take the focus off the ball? Um, and they were right. But I started joking, like, you know, the R&D ended up standing for like, you know, research and destroy uh, <laughs> because they, like they were destroying everything. But they absolutely, they were correct. They, they were correct. So, so those are some of the things that I've learned along the way with, with like what my, my strengths are, what my weaknesses are, um, and to, uh, to really focus on what I do best which is the launch, you know, getting it to a certain stage and then surrounding myself with people that can help take it to the next level. You know, I, um, I think it's a nice transition as we talk about your businesses. I, I, I want to talk about your podcast a little bit because I think there's a lot of questions we can get into and explore with the Gonzo experience. But, you know, it's I know you often say, like, you know, I'm going to make we're going to make your time worth your while when you listen to to this conversation. Um, you as I listen to your the, the conversations, you, you know, clearly. There's a you have a, a defined purpose. There's a there's a lane that you're playing in. But yet, on the other hand, it's interesting because you do weave in and out and I, I got to tell you, that's that's what makes it really interesting for me. I, I it's almost become addicting, David. Like I've started to like I know there's been an evolution of your podcast, but the conversations, the types of conversations, the types of people you have, the topics that you hit on, the lessons that are learned. I mean, it's and I mean this sincerely. It's it's become kind of addicting, where we kind of go you. through this and um, and you know there really is something for everyone. I know there's that 
there's that business purpose, but I some of the some of the folks you you've you've had a chance to talk to, and like I said, I just it just pulls you in. Um, gosh, there was one I, I jotted down. I was listening. Uh, I was it was um, Javon McCormick, and I hope yes. I'm pronouncing his name correctly. But I mean, my goodness, and that's just one example from you know, and I'm and I'm quoting the son of a pimp to a CEO. Yep. I mean, but I'm saying it's just. It's really, really become interesting. So I guess what I want to do is let's get to that. So you, from the Gonzo experience, and I know before it was, it was a different evolution of it was it was um, it was Fish a yeah the Avanti, Avanti yes. When you started the podcast, I mean, has it has it morphed the way you thought it was going to morph? Or as it's grown and you're doing this more and more, is this kind of going into some areas like, I didn't expect this. This is becoming, because it is entertaining. And I think that's okay to say. I'm, I'm very entertained when I listen. So what's been your philosophy? Has it changed? Is it going right where you thought it was? Talk to us about that. Yeah, well, so when, so I started my podcast in October of 2016. So it's been a little over five years. And when um, when it was early 2016, when I told my team that I'm going to start a podcast and um, I got the world eye look, like, oh my God, here he goes again. Yeah. Another thing that you know he's going to do for a few months and then lose interest and change directions. Um, and I said, no, no, trust me. I really think I'm going to like this, right? But I always said that, right? But <laughs> uh, but now, now, truth be told, five years later, it is the one thing that I've done consistently for five years, it's the it's probably the thing I um, that I do the best. I love, I just love it. It's the thing I like the best, is what I should say. Um, you know, if I could be you know a full time podcaster like Joe Rogan, I think I'd be very 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 happy. Now. So, uh, and maybe I will be someday. But um, so I appreciate the compliments. But you know, when I did it in the beginning, so you know, in, in the beginning of the show, we were uh, talking about Wendy Thiel, who introduced Patrick and myself. Well. Her brother-in-law, a guy named Steve Westner, who's out near neck of the woods, La Crosse, Wisconsin, kind of close, right? Yeah. He's, a, he's a good friend of mine. I met him at a Darren Hardy event years ago, and he started a company to help people start podcasts. So I'm like, oh, Stephen, I want to do this. So great training program, trained me for about three months, and then I launched. And, um, and you know, Stephen's program is, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, you, you could become famous podcaster. But but really, at the end of the day, a good podcast establishes credibility, like writing a book. Um, and you know what? It builds your network. It builds yeah. your credibility. And it gets you in the doors where you may not ever get in. Like if I ever called Grant Cardone and just said, hi, Grant, um, I'm a business owner in upstate New York, and I'd love to talk to you. you. You think I would make it past, you know, the gatekeeper of the gatekeeper? <laughs> no. Right. But um, I, you know, I ended up getting in into Grant Cardone's, you know, door and, and talked to him for an hour on the podcast uh, because I had a podcast, yes, right? And by the time I called him, I had built up some momentum and some credibility, so he was able to say, wow, mm -hmm. this guy looks pretty legit. Uh, Ed Milet, except, you know, one of my favorite interviews, Ellen Latham, founder of Orange Theory Fitness, you know, mm -hmm. she had taken a call, I don't think so, she's pretty busy, right? So, so, um, so I, I think what has happened that maybe I didn't expect was um, I'm building a really great network of, I would say, some pretty impressive thought leaders and um and just For by sure. you know having the, the, the courage to take a deep breath and say like hey listen let me try you know i i don't know grant cardone now um if he says no to me i still won't know him <laughs> you know i'll be in the same place <laughs> it's just like ask out a girl right you know like hey listen i i don't have her as a girlfriend now um so if i ask her and she says no i i i still don't have her as a girlfriend so you know that was my philosophy in college and I got a lot of no's, but you know, every now and then I got a yes, right? So, um, but uh, so I built a really um, beautiful network of friends because of the podcast. So I can call you, talk about Javon McCormick. Like we've become really good friends. I love the guy. Um, I brought him to Rochester to speak. Um, I randomly ran him into in, the airport in, in Atlanta, like what the biggest airport in the world, I think. Like, and we were like hugging, like, oh my God, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just randomly called him because, you know, and he was on Stephen Westner's podcast. And I was like, oh, I'd love to have this guy on my podcast. Called him. He said, yes. So meeting friends like you, meeting people like you, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, meeting, you know, Patrick introduced me to uh, uh, to Jamie Andrzejewski. 
Chesky. Yeah. Is it, yeah, I call her Jamie A. But yeah, yeah. Just call uh, her Jamie A. Jamie A. Like she's you know, like she's wonderful. Like you know, great soul. And we're friends now. So building, a, I, I would think an authentic, really great network slash friendship with a lot of my guests has, has been uh, truly um, just heartwarming to me, and, and and the best part of having my podcast. David, let, let me just hang on that for a minute because that's that's a huge thing, right? It's the networking, it's the connecting, right? You seem, you and I have an authentic relationship. I mean, it's it's legit. But when you're reaching out to people, mm. what do you do? Like, I mean, are you just cold calling them? Are you cold emailing them? What's the kind of? I want to break it down a little bit. What are some of the tactics that you're taking that it's not cheesy, right? I mean, you're not going to yeah. get an answer 100 percent, the right answer 100 percent of the time, but. What are the steps that you take? I'd love to hear from from you on this. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, well, sometimes I'll know somebody that knows somebody, and I'll ask for a connection, or uh, I'll get an intro to the uh, you know the assistant, things like that. Yeah, right. Uh, right on. You know, Grant Cardone. I had a uh, I had a, a friend that says, "Oh, I I know Grant Cardone's assistant. You know, if you want to email her and see if she'll if he'll be on the." I was like, so I took a shot, right, and it worked. Um, but a lot of times, like I'll read a book or I'll. I'll, I'll I'll hear somebody on a podcast. I'm like, oh, I would love to have that person mm. on my podcast in my in my world. So you know, uh, the great Zig Ziglar, you know, his quote, "Show me that you know me," and uh, and and so I will, you know, I will read their book. I will listen to the podcast. I will go to their website, and and then so by the time I contact them, they're like, "Oh my God, you really know a lot about me." Yeah, you know, and uh, like you know, uh, I had uh, Paul Orfalo, the founder of Kinkos. Um, I uh, I didn't have him on my podcast because I met him before I started my podcast. But when I had my magazine, um, I inter I interviewed him, and uh, and I and I cold called him. I said oh, I have this magazine for high school students, and I have a column called Interview with an Entrepreneur. Would love to have you on it. And he goes, I'll do it, but under one condition. And I said, Whatever. What, what do you need? He goes, Well, I'm retired. You know, from Kinkos, they had bought him out by then, FedEx. And uh, I'm teaching a class at uh, you know UC Santa Barbara. And I want you to come in and guest speak to my class. Like, wow. Well, wow. that is a no brainer. Yeah. He flew yeah. me out. I stayed at his house. Right. I mean, it was crazy. Awesome. Paul Orfala, right? Worth, you know, $4 billion and, uh, you know, <laughs> crazy entrepreneur, wonderful guy. Uh, but that's, that's an example of me just, you know, oh, well, I tell you that because, you know, he had uh, written a couple of books and one was a biography and, or an autobiography. And um, so I read it, you know, in, so when I, when I did get to meet him, he was like, wow, you know, you know a lot about me. Um, and he was saying, you know, like a little nervous, like I had stalked him. And uh, I was like, well, I just read your book. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, to answer the question is, you know, to take the cheese factor out, just show them that you know him. You know, you know I, I posted the other day about how LinkedIn, in my mind, is getting cheesy because you know, I get five to ten requests a day. You know, from uh, you know uh, some guy in Pakistan that you know wants to do my website. Yeah. I'm like, well, I already have a website, um, and if I need a new one, I'm not going to do it with you. You know, and uh, so they don't know me. They're they're not showing me that they you know like if they would have said, oh my God, David, I watched your TEDx talk, I read your book, uh, based on, on getting to know you through the these you know you know these vehicles, um, I, I think I could help you with this idea that I have. Would you open to a 15 minute conversation? Now, I'd probably say, like, yeah, I'll give them 15 minutes. You know, they they, they spend some time getting to know me. Um, so, out of respect, I will do that. So, so show, show, show them that you know them. I think that's that's the, the simple answer to the question. Yeah. You know, when it comes to a blog, uh, we have our own, obviously, our podcast. Um, you know, it's about getting quality people. We know it's about being consistent. But one of the things that surprised me, and you said it was, you almost become friends with these people at the end. It's not transactional where it's, hey, we just did a podcast to have a nice life. I look at the people that yeah. we've talked to this year, and we, Pat, we've talked about this, Kurt, we could pick up the phone mm -hmm. and call any one of those people and they pick up and be like, hey, how you doing, guys? Um, so yeah. it's such a great way to get introduced to people, but also get to know them. And that builds right into what you're yeah. saying about authenticity and being real and really caring about people. That's what I think has been the greatest joy is, you know, getting to know folks in addition to delivering yeah. good content and, and all the other good stuff. But that's a byproduct that a lot of people don't take into consideration. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about it's all about creating value and then, and then using that value to, to, to help people. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, on top on top of that, on top of that too, it's those are all great points because I I always I enjoy hearing why you're doing it. And Brian, those are great points. And and to put a period on the on the points David had made why he's doing it. The other one too is just the enjoyment. You know, and that, that's yeah. okay, right? You know, it's yeah. like you hit it on the head. It's like connections, networking. You want to meet people, the authenticity. But you know what? At the end of the day, make no apologies. You enjoy it. You're having fun. Yeah. And you know what? That's infectious. And I and I feel that way about our pot. I enjoy it. And that's a good yeah. thing. So I, I, I can sense that in your voice and you said it. So that's a good thing, too. Yeah, and you're creating value. You're doing something you enjoy. Absolutely. You're creating value. And whenever you're, you're doing something, that you enjoy it gives you energy so you just yes. want to do more of it hmm. you know so you know yeah. when, I, when i'm going you know when i'm looking at a spreadsheet i'm not enjoying it you know my energy <laughs> dies like you know like i have a great i have the greatest bookkeeper ever hello <laughs> jen collie like and you know and and so you know like, once again surrounding yourself with a team like i know what i'm good at i know what i suck at let me surround myself with a team and then um and then, you know, this is a, this is, you know, this is another uh, tip I put in one of my books or something, I, or one of my videos I said one day, but you know, the, the whole thing like delegate, but don't abdicate uh, the way yeah. by that is like, so Jen, like I delegate the bookkeeping to Jen, right. But I don't abdicate it. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not like la la la. I don't know what, I don't want to know what's going on. Like, I, you know, I want to be able to um, inspect what I expect. And then, and so like a, a you know, some type of rhythm where I'm getting my finger on the pulse enough to, you know, like, okay, you know, we're going to be around for another couple of months. Right? Yeah. So, and then to go back to what I do best. So, um, so I think that that's, you know, to stick to your strengths, but also delegate, don't abdicate and then inspect what you expect. David, um, this is called over a pint marketing and I want to get your thoughts on marketing because you just seem like a textbook of things, a business an entrepreneur, you name it, should do. I mean, you've done TED Talks. You've got a podcast, a successful podcast. You, um, you're presenting a lot. How do you, like, how do you view marketing? Like, when you're thinking about building your brand and doing things, how are you determining? Yeah, I got to do a book. Yeah, I love to do a TED Talk. How do you? What's the process, right? What are you going? Yeah, yeah. So, well, you guys will like this answer. I think every company is a marketing company and oh, they have a product. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the famous, you know, metaphor, like, you know, the, the hot dog stand went out of business because the guy was making the sign, right? Instead of cooking a hot dog, right? You know, like, it's, you could be ready, set, ready, set, ready, set, like, you gotta go. Uh, and, and, and the go is marketing. Like, you know, you could have the best store ever, but if people don't know about it, then they're not going to come. And um, so, uh, so I'm a big marketer. I think I'm a, I'm a, I'm a you know marketer at heart, uh, but once again, it goes back to meaningful marketing, authentic marketing. You know, true marketing. You don't want to overpromise uh, and underdeliver. You want to underpromise and overdeliver, right? I mean, right. that wow experience. Uh, but for me, you know, so the end in mind for me is always is 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 the product at the beginning is the marketing. Like how you know once this product is done. Um, you know, how, or how can we successfully market it like with the book? Now, unfortunately, <laughs> we had a great marketing plan for my latest book, Crash and Learn, uh, which is a, a great present for entrepreneurs, by the way. Wink, wink. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's 10 stories of entrepreneurs that, that were on top of the world, you know, cr their business crashed. But instead of burning, they learned and rose like the phoenix again. So we, we, we got myself and nine other authors wrote a great book and then. You know, the launch date uh, was, oh, early March 2020. So Perfect. just in time for COVID. But, you know, it, it actually helped a little bit because people were reading more because they had more time. But the marketing that we were planning on what, what didn't really wasn't really going to work that well because what we were going to do, we had 10 authors around the country. And, you know, we were going to, you know, do, you know, go to the local bookstores and do book signings. Uh, you know, I was going to have a huge event where uh, Jeffrey Gilmore was going to uh, be my headliner, my keynote. Wow. And we were going to sell, we got four or 500 people there. We're going to sell books there, et cetera. Yep. So all that, you know, people based, event based marketing went away. Um, so, we, you know, we used, you know, 10 people use their network, social media, email, newsletter, all that great stuff to sell books. So, um, but, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of companies go under because they don't have a marketing strategy and or they don't have a sales strategy. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's a nice transition. I actually was going to ask you the crash and learn. I like that. It was you know, that. So 
you know, in your career, and it's been, it's, you've done a lot in your career. Maybe share with us, David, if you could, what's been one of your more memorable crash and learns in your history that you could, you'd be willing to share with us? Yeah, well, there, there's there's a big one. Uh, so we talked about that I had started a printed magazine for teenagers back in 95, Next Step magazine, then we changed it to Next Step U. And um, and so we, we were printing like, you know, over 300,000 copies five times a year and distributed wow. them free in high schools, and our, you know, our we were we were in five thousand company three years in a row. Like we were cranking, yeah. Um, you know, multi million, you know, franchising the whole works. Uh, but then you know that uh, that damn you guys love it, but that damn digital revolution, right? <laughs> 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 you know, kind of, kind of, you know, uh, quickly. Yeah. And I'll say very quickly. You know, kicked uh, print pretty damn hard. And then when you include print and teens, which was our market, even harder. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. so we, our revenue just went off a cliff. We had like, it was in the course of like two years. It was like a nosedive. And because a lot of advertisers were like, Dave, we love you. We love Next Step. We love your company, people. Well, we don't want print anymore. Just give us your digital stuff. Mm. And we did. I mean, we worked hard. We, you know, we did a, you know, digital edition and more stuff with our website and the whole works. But as you've seen with many, many publishing companies, it's never the same, right? The revenue is never the same. You know, we had 17 regional editions of the magazine around the country. You know, we could sell page, you know, three, you know, 17 different times, right? And, uh -huh. uh, yep. you know, and, and so we really, you know, just the model with print was, was much more profitable than just having colleges. Colleges were our advertisers for the most part, just having colleges on our site. Um, because then to transition into a cost per lead business, you know, when you're online, you could measure more, less less about branding, which you know, traditionally, magazine advertising is branding and exposure. You know, now it's you know like very accountable cost per lead advertising. You know, twenty bucks a lead, thirty bucks a lead. Yeah. So it's very transactional now. Um, I stopped doing it, so I sold it, um, and, and we moved on. But so. Uh, but uh, but the crash part was like revenue tanked. I kept the model too long because I thought we could save it. I kept the people too long because I loved them. They helped me build the company. So I went from being very profitable to you know um, keeping the company too long, uh, you know, building up debt within the company, and really um, uh, you know by the time I had a lot of people go, it was it was it was painful. It was just mm. a painful experience all around. People wise, revenue wise, uh, et, et cetera. So I talk a lot about it in my book, Crash and Learn. But you know, that's that's kind of the high level story is mm -hmm. going going from like thinking I'm you know king of the world, poop doesn't stink, you know, Inc. Five Thousand Company, three years in a row, and you know Rochester Top One Hundred Company, and all that great stuff. Uh, the bell of the ball to like, oh my god, like waking up at three in the morning, like I can't make payroll tomorrow. What the hell am I gonna do? So mm -hmm. it's, it's wow. you know, very a uh, lot a lot of humility within a, uh, a quick period of time. Mm. Wow. Um, David, we are out of time. You have been amazing. Mm. Um, this is, yeah, you guys thank should, you so you. much. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for being so honest about that, yeah. that answer too. That's, that, that's super cool. Um, you've got the mic, sir. Um, pimp it out. Give us all you got. You know, how do people connect with you? Mm. What products do you want to push? I don't know if you've got a podcast or not. I'm kidding. Uh, promote everything you want. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, if you want to get the the recap of everything that I do, go to my website, which is going to be, you know, creatively named davidmamano.com. Uh, <laughs> so you can check that out. But, you know, find my podcast, my books, some things that we do on there as well. Uh, the podcast is called The Gonzo Experience. And my nickname in college was Gonzo, and people still call me Gonzo. So that's, huh. that's why that is. Uh, but um, uh, as far as my book, it's on Amazon, Crash and Learn. I'm trying to think what else. You know, I love to I love to authentically connect with you. If you think I can help you or you just want to chat, that's way to do that is through me an email, david at davidmamano.com. Or, uh, you know, or just have Patrick uh, do an intro because, you know, the uh, connection will mean that much more. So I'm here for you and I'd be happy to talk and help you any way I can. It's awesome. Yeah. David, thank you so much. Uh, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. to you guys. And, uh, thank you. And, uh, and here's to a uh, rocking uh, 2022. Yeah. Thanks Let's for your insights, Thanks, David. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.